Subhanallah, sometimes we give sadaqah, mm -hmm. we give to people. Alhamdulillah, we are generous sometimes. But the ajr you are expecting is going to go away. That ajr is going to disappear because you are reminding the person that you have given the sadaqah to how much you've done for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Subhanallah. Sometimes we even say this to our parents. Oh, why are you asking me money all the time? I've given you, I've given you, I've given you, I've given you too much. So you are reminding them, you're hurting them. You say like, oh, yes, I'm superior. I've been giving you this and that. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not follow their spending with reminders. You don't remind the person. Ah, I remember last year, mashallah, I was a bit generous last year, didn't I? Ah, I've given you a bit of money. So you are reminding the person. Allah said, Those people, what will they have? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, for them, their rewards is with their Lord. They will have no fear in the next life. When will you not have fear? When you do not follow or when you don't remind people the sadaqah that you give to them. And then let me remind you this, Ikhwani. The Prophet وسلم, reminded us this. Look at the severity of reminding the people the sadaqah that you gave them. Look what the Prophet has said. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'een اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل في كل سنبلة مئة حبة والله يضاعف لمن يشاء والله واسع عليم الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله ثم لا يتبعون ما أنفقوا ثم لا يتبعون ما أنفقوا منا ولا أذلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون قول معروف ومغفرة خير من صدقة يتبعها أذى والله غني حليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى كالذي ينفق ما له رئاء الناس ولا يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فمثله كمثل صفوان عليه تراب فأصابه وابل فأصابه وابل فتركه صلدا لا يقدرون على شيء مما كسبوا والله لا يهدي القوم الكافرين ومثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم ابتراء مرضات الله وتثبيتا من أنفسهم كمثل كمثل جنة بربوة أصابها وابل فآتت أكلها ضعفين فإن لم يصبها وابل فقل والله بما تعملون بصير أيعد أحدكم أن تكون له جنة من نخيل وأعناب تجري من تحتها الأنهار له فيها من كل الثمرات وأصابه الكبر وله ذرية ضعفاء 
فأصابها إعصار فيه نار فاحترقت كذلك يبين الله لكم الآيات لعلكم تتفكرون. إن شاء الله تعالى just before we begin uh, tomorrow صلاة الفجر will be uh, six o'clock إن شاء الله تعالى six o'clock so just fifteen minutes earlier than this morning. So inshallah ta'ala be aware of that as usual inshallah ta'ala and also uh, before I begin this morning uh, one of our sisters has asked us to make dua for her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, makes her affairs easy for her so nasallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala that he inshallah ta'ala makes uh, her affairs easy for her and whatever test that she's going through and whatever test that he is going to do right now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for her. Allahumma ameen. Okay, so inshallah ta'ala, as usual, we will be uh, continuing with our journey in Surah Al-Baqarah. I just want to uh, just remind you the general overview of Surah Al-Baqarah. Yeah, this surah is long. And now we are in the third juz of the surah. Subhanallah. We've, start, we've completed so far two juz of Surah Al-Baqarah. We've started the third juz right now. And alhamdulillah, we are coming to almost, we are coming to the end of the surah. Remember this surah, we have divided it at the beginning when we were starting. And introduction, part one, part two, and conclusion. So alhamdulillah, we've completed the introduction. We have completed the part one. We have completed, we are in the, we are at the end of part two right now. <laughs> we only have the conclusion left. So the, the, the part of Al-Baqarah that we have right now remaining, beginning with this morning, inshallah ta'ala from this morning, and it's all about finances, it's all about wealth, is how you spend your wealth, okay? And this is a very important topic, very, very important topic. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deal with the concept of wealth from three different angles. One of it is those, those believers who give their wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's about sadaqah, the importance of sadaqah. It's a great investment as we will see this morning inshallah ta'ala. And then Allah after that will talk about the danger of riba. Riba is coming. The ayat of riba, the severity of interest that is coming up. And then after that, the longest ayah of the Quran will come. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha tadayantum bidaynin ila ajalim musamma. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to talk about the issues regarding transactions and also the issues regarding debt. And inshallah ta'ala, the concept of debt will be talked about quite extensively and how important this concept is. And especially uh, nowadays, subhanallah. And we will, we will come to all of this, inshallah ta'ala. And then after that will be the conclusion of the surah, subhanallah, a summary of the whole surah, the last three ayat of surah al-Baqarah. And inshallah ta'ala, we'll get there. But as you can see now, we're approaching the flight is about to come to land, the flight is about to land at the, the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. So Alhamdulillah, uh, <clears throat> we are almost there. So this morning, where are we beginning from? Or where did we start from? This morning we started from وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل الله سبحانه وتعالى is going to give us a parable, a method. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to teach us what are we going to get for being charitable. If you give money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are you going to receive? What will you be getting as a, as a, as a compensation? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the likeness of those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah is that of a grain, is that of a grain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then a grain of corn that produces seven ears, each ear bearing a hundred grains. Allah gives manifold increase to whomever he wills. And Allah is all encompassing, all knowing. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us a mental picture of like how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to multiply the ajr you're going to have when you donate, for example, for one pound. Imagine you just donated one pound. How much are you going to get in return? SubhanAllah. You're going to get in return plenty. 
imagine if um, a big business tycoon comes to you right now and gives you an offer. And he says to you, if you invest in my business, I'm very successful, you know me, yeah? Yes, I know you, you're very successful. Okay, and whatever you touch turns into, into gold. Yes, we know that. And he tells you, like, if you invest in my business right now, and you just invest like 1,000 pounds, 500 pounds, whatever, you will be getting that percentage of, 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 of profit. What are we going to do? Oh, you're going to trust that guy. You're going to say, oh, this guy's expert. He makes money. He's this and that. You would invest money in it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he tells you, like, if you invest one pound with me, this is an amazing investment. Okay, it's a long-term investment. Long, long-term investment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that if you spend money, okay, in this way, I am going to promise you the following. The likeness of those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah is that of a grain of corn that produces seven years, each year bearing a hundred grains. And look at subhanAllah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this amazing mental picture. So now we can actually picture this and we can see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply our subhanAllah sadaqah and our ajr. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us in a hadith, a companion has given a horse and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said uh, to this companion, or he gave a camel, for example. Abu Mas'ud said that a man once gave away a camel with its bridle on in the cause of Allah. And the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, لَتَأْتِيَنَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِسَبْعِ مِئَةِ نَاقَ مَخْطُومَةِ On the day of resurrection, you will have 700 camels with their bridles. Subhanallah, you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you do business with Allah, how much return you are going to get. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also educates us. Sometimes, do you know shaitan is so evil? If you get away from shaitan, if you fight against yourself, as human beings we are stingy, we don't like to spend money. Okay? We love wealth. When it comes to wealth, we love wealth. We don't want to, subhanAllah, we don't want to kind of like uh, give money away so easily. But now you fought against yourself. And alhamdulillah, you overcame yourself, your soul, yourself. And now you gave sadaqah. Is shaitan going to say, okay, this guy got away from me? Shaitan is going to come after you. He's going to make you actually lose the ajr. How is he going to make you lose that ajr? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, who are the people who will get the maximum profit from the sadaqah? They are the following people. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ لَا يُتْبِعُونَ مَا أَنْفَقُوا مَنًّا وَلَا أَذَا Wow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who spend their wealth, who are the people who will have it like 700 times Alhamdulillah, 700% uh, for example, of, of return. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will manifold or, and, and multiply the ajr up to 700 times. Who are these people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ They're the ones who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah. And do not follow their spending with reminders of their generosity or hurtful words. Ah, they don't remind people. Ah, do you know last year? Do you remember how much I gave you? Ah, do you know when you called me last, week, last year, I gave you... A thousand pounds, and now you're calling me again? Ah. How, subhanallah, sometimes we give sadaqah, mm -hmm. we give to people, alhamdulillah, we are generous sometimes, but the ajr you were expecting is going to go away, that ajr is going to disappear, because you are reminding the person that you have given the sadaqah to, how much you've done for them. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا يتبعون ما أنفقوا من ولا أذى. Subhanallah. Sometimes we even say this to our parents. Oh, why are you asking me money all the time? I've given you, I've given you, I've given you, I've given you, I've given you too much. So you are reminding them, you're hurting them. You say like, oh, yes, I'm superior. I've been giving you this and that. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they do not follow their spending with reminders. You don't remind the person. Ah, I remember last year, mashallah, I was a bit generous last year, innit? I've given you a bit of money. Okay, so you are reminding the person. A month ago, I gave you a bit. So you are reminding the person constantly. No. Allah said, لا يتبعون ما أنفقوا منا ولا أذى. Those people, what will they have? لهم أجرهم عند ربهم. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, for them, their rewards is with their Lord. They will have no fear in the next life. When will you not have fear? When you do not follow or when you don't remind people the sadaqah that you gave to them. Also, 
when you do not use hurtful words against those people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people, they will have, alhamdulillah, reward with their Lord, and they will have no fear, nor will they grieve. And then, let me remind you this, ikhwani. Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, reminded us this. Look at the severity of reminding the people the sadaqah that you gave them. Look what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. Thalathatun. لا يكلمهم الله يوم القيامة ولا ينظر إليهم ولا يزكيهم ولهم عذاب أليم. Who's the first one? المنان بما أعطى والمسبل إزاره. Okay. And also the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said. Okay. The one I will, inshallah ta'ala, go through and be in the ta'ala, the, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, three persons whom Allah shall neither speak to on the day of resurrection, nor look at, nor purify. Those, these three people, these three types of people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's not going to look at them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to talk to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to pure them, purify them. Who are these three people? And Allah and also the Prophet said, and they shall receive a painful torment. All of these things were they were promised. All of these things. Who are these people? Number one is he who reminds the people of what he gives away. If you remind the people, say, ah, I give this, I give that, I give this. I, you're reminding the person, I've given you this. Why are you asking me more? Why are you coming back to me again? So if you talk to people like that, al manan bima a'ta. Also, this is another important matter we have to look at he who lengthens his clothes below the ankle ah watch brothers we have to be very careful do you know isbal so if you are wearing a trousers for example or a thawb okay make sure it is above the ankle <coughs> don't let it go loose until it goes under the ankle so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wal musbilu izarahu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to look at that person so you have to be very careful also, after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also has said, and he who swears an oath while lying to sell his merchandise. Someone who says, so imagine you have a shop where you sell things, and then you say to the person, okay, this item, I'm going to sell it to you for 100 pounds. And the person says, that's actually too much. Okay, let me give you 90 pounds or 80 pounds. And then you say, wallahi, akhi, wallah, wallah, do you know how much I got it for? You know how much I bought it for myself? 99 pounds, 0.99. I'm only profiting from you one pay. Give me the 100 pounds, okay? And you got it for what? <laughs> so the Prophet Sallallahu if you are someone like that who swears by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, why are you lying? And because, why are you doing this? Because you want to sell this item. You say, Wallahi, Aki, let me tell you, Wallahi, I'm being honest with you. Listen to me, bro. Listen to me. Wallahi, I got it for 99 pounds. I'm only profiting from you one pound. Why are you being so stingy? You don't want to give me, you don't want to give me one pound as a prophet? Okay, take it, 100 pounds. And you got it for what? A lot less than that, <laughs> 50 pounds. Okay, you're making a profit of 100 pounds, 100% profit. SubhanAllah, greedy, SubhanAllah. How, how greedy are people these days, SubhanAllah. So the Prophet said, if someone swears by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lying, and at the same time, what's it, why is he doing this? He wants to sell this item. So the Prophet said, that is absolutely serious. And then the next ayah, Allah said, قَوْلٌ مَعْرُوفٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٍ يَتْبَعُهَا أَذَىٰ Allahu Akbar. The beauty of the Quran, and mashallah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us advice and teaches us the etiquettes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, kind words and forgiveness are better than charity followed by hurtful words. Okay? It's better that you say good words. And pardoning people is far better than giving sadaqah and then you follow it up with what? With hurtful words. You hurt the person. Why are you not? Just go and work, man. Why are you asking me for help all the time? Why are you asking this? this that? So if you talk to the person like that, you are being hurt. You are hurting that person. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and then Imam Sa'id rahimahullah ta'ala explaining kind words. He said, Qawlun ma'ruf, kind words. He said, that is words that are acceptable and not objectionable. That includes any kind words that make a Muslim feel happy. And also he said, such as speaking gently when have to turn away a beggar. Imagine someone who's begging came to you right now. I said to you, please, I need help. 
and you haven't got anything. When you talk to them, talk to them nicely. Okay? Do not be harsh, harsh with them. Do not be what? Harsh with them. You have to be kind. What did Allah say? Such as speaking gently when having to turn away a beggar and praying for him and also make dua for him. Okay? Say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with wealth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you something that will make you happy. So, inshallah ta'ala, when you're turning away the person who was a beggar, be kind to them. Also, unforgiveness. Okay, this is another point. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ Pardoning the person. Towards one who mistreats you by not blaming him and by pardoning him. And he said, that includes pardoning what the beggar may say of offensive words. Imagine when you turn away the beggar and he didn't take it well, he might say to you something negative. Do not react. Do not react to that. Subhanallah. Be gentle and forgiving and say, okay, no problem, Akhi. thank you. Whatever you said to me, it doesn't matter. Thank you very much. Okay, I haven't got anything to give you right now. So you have to be like that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us another parable, which is very powerful. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal adha. This is a warning. O oh, you who believe. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, oh, you who believe, we have to listen very carefully. Do not nullify your acts of charity with reminders or with reminders and hurtful words, like the one who spends his wealth to show off before people. Sometimes we give sadaqah, but we are doing it for what? Maybe showing off. We want to show to the people, show off to the people and say, look how generous I am. I can give, I have wealth. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not nullify your acts of, work, acts of charity. Okay, by showing off. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the person who does that, his likeness is that of a smooth rock. Imagine, yes, a smooth rock on which there is little soil. There's little soil on top of this very smooth soil, uh, so, 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 and rock. When heavy rain falls, it leaves it completely bare. Imagine there was a little bit of soil on top of this very solid rock. Okay, so what will happen when heavy rain comes? What will happen? The, this will leave it completely bare because the rain, the rainwater will take away the soil that was on top of this a rock. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they will gain nothing, nothing from their efforts. And Allah does not guide the disbelieving people. So you can see, if you are someone who gives sadaqah, and then after that you talk about it, and you say this, look what I've done, I've done this, I've done that. And you say to the, the people hurtful words, the people that you've helped, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is going to happen? You will lose the whole ajr. Like that uh, rock has lost all the soil that was on top of it. And now there is another hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Three types of people, Allah is not going to look at them. Number one, Very, very serious. The person who disrespects his parents. Everyone pay attention. If you become... If you become someone who disrespects his parents, the father and the mother, both, both, okay? Sometimes someone says, oh, I'm nice to my mother, but I'm going to be horrible to my father. No, 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 no. Both of them, you have to be kind to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the Prophet, what did he say? The person who is what? Disobedient and disrespectful to his parents. Number two, mudmin al khamr, the person who becomes addicted to alcohol. And many people are becoming addicted to alcohol. Subhanallah. Yes. The Prophet said, if somebody becomes mudmin in alcohol, that person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not going to look at him. Also, walmananu bima a'ta, the person who talks about what he has given. Okay, the person who hurts other people by reminding them what wealth he gave to them. Like, I've done this for you, I've done that for you, subhanallah. So another uh, hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said, لا يدخل الجنة. That person will not enter paradise. Mudmin khamr, the person who's addicted to alcohol. ولا عقل والدي, the person who's disrespectful to his parent. And also, ولا منان, the person who talks about the khayr that he has done and the sadaqah that he has given to, to, the, to the people. So, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to end with the following couple of ayat, inshallah ta'ala. What about the person who gives for the sake of Allah and the likeness of those who spend their wealth seeking Allah's pleasure and out of their own inner certainty is that of a garden on high ground. If heavy rain falls on it, it makes it yield a double increase of harvest. And if it does not receive heavy rain, then a light drizzle 
a light drizzle suffices and that's enough allah sees all that you do subhanallah that is the person who gives sadaqa for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last ayah ikhwani ayawaddu ahadukum okay this is a this is also another warning ayawaddu ahadukum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said does any does any of you wish to have a garden with date palms and vines through which rivers flow with all kinds of fruit while he's stricken with old age and his children are weak, too small to look after themselves, then it should be consumed by a fiery whirlwind. Thus Allah makes clear to you his revelations that you may reflect. What does this ayah mean? It's like a, some sort of parable. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us something which is very serious. It's like if you are good at the beginning and then you become bad at the end. Yes, this is the danger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, does any of you wish to have a garden with date palms and vines through which rivers flow with all kinds of fruit while he is stricken with old age? You can't do anything. Okay. And his children are weak, too small to look after themselves. Then it should be consumed by a fiery world and a whirlwind. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us like uh, a warning saying to us, do not be good at the beginning and then at the end of your life, you, dis you become someone who disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not turn back and become a bad person. Okay, so this is a severe warning for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast upon the straight path. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who give sadaqah in a plentiful way, without being what? Without boasting about it, without hurting the people about it. And finally, Ikhwani, I want to share with you this uh, sad news, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raja'un, inna lillahi ma akhad wa lahu ma a'ta, wa kullu shayin andahu li ajali musamma. We have our brother, Ustaz Bashir, who's sitting at the back near brother Muddathir. He has lost his father, who was a sheikh back home and who was knowledgeable and, and the mufti of his, mashallah, uh, the area that where the sheikh was and Sheikh Bashir, Muhammad, Sheikh Bashir, Muhammad Bashir, Sheikh Muhammad Bashir has passed away yesterday. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with Jannah al firdaus al-A'la and his progeny, mashallah, Sheikh Muhammad is also here. Bashir, please give him your condolences. He's just sitting next to you, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallah fiqh.